first thing I noticed when I entered Mr. Johnson's house was not the dust and the cobwebs, which, in their unnatural mass, gave the impression of a century's desolation. Neither was it the musty smell in the air, the disorderly placement of rooms, nor the simple, unsettling notion of an old Tudor household gone to ruin. It was something else, something I noticed from the moment I opened the latch into that mysterious old building. It was the furniture. The wardrobes, chairs, drawers, even the dining tables had been stacked, intentionally, up against the walls to the extent of bizarre perfectionism. In some rooms, furniture was stacked high, row upon row. In others, little furniture had been placed at all. But it always targeted the walls. In fact, not a single police now held its rightful place upon the floor. Nearly a month had passed since the old pensioner, Stuart Howard Johnson, of 24 Rosethorn Place, had disappeared into the curling mist of that thick winter's day. Nobody knew what had become of the old man, but, naturally, local concerns exploded like wildfire. Mr Johnson had been the friendly geriatric character of the community, a sweet old gentleman, in the words of the village mothers, whose kindly aura had conjured up a much-needed charm at drab local events. Nobody had expected his sudden departure. In fact, at 74, Mr Johnson was actually healthier than some of the local youths, an ex-marathon runner keen to keep up on his strict exercise regime. Naturally, death wasn't ruled out, but suspected. In fact, the candidate of murder, out of jealousy, vengeance, or just plain sadism, seemed a much more plausible explanation. The police were on the scene within hours of his disappearance, but there was little they could do in the way of investigation. They noticed the aforementioned inconsistencies, of course, but these did not pass off as actual physical evidence, just some sort of hectic arrangements at the hands of a strange old man. The investigation was over within just two weeks, and the house left to rot away, furniture and all. Not the foggiest idea existed of what happened to Mr Johnson on that fateful day. As I toured the household, taking in each and every last bizarre detail and attempting, desperately, to make the roughest sense of it all, a neighbour guided me via a running commentary on the investigation. I seemed to lose track of myself among the sheer conundrum presented by the household organisation. There was not a single room, a sole corridor, where the furniture placement wasn't hectic, uncontrolled, perhaps even disturbing. Naturally, it wasn't long before I inquired about the arrangements. The neighbour seemed unaffected by the organisation. His claim was that Mr Johnson had lost all mental health in his old age. To that extent, a paranoia began to set in. This wasn't helped when a group of youths began pestering him from the street. Eventually, he started stacking up furniture against each and every little crack, every fracture in the wall, in the hope of outwitting his imaginary spies. Even the tiniest dent was soon covered up, perhaps a chair or two, or three, or four. Some stacks even comprised of around seven objects, all reaching the ceiling of what wasn't actually a large house. I was desperate for a more plausible answer, something that my inner conscience could truly believe in. But, for some reason or another, I just passed it off. After a good half hour of inspection, I thought it was best time to leave. I thanked the neighbour for his tour and retired back to my own home for the day. But the unsettling mystery of 24 Rose Thorn Place remained fixed in my head for a long time to come. Two weeks later, something happened that, I can tell you now, confirmed my deepest belief that Mr Johnson had secrets to hide. While scouring the house in a refurbishment job for the next owner, a cleaner had discovered a well-concealed hole in the wall of the basement. Inside, he found what appeared to be an annex chamber, absolutely smouldered in darkness and reeking of age. What he saw when he switched his flashlight on sent him running in sheer terror from the building and straight to the police. For, inside that secret room, there lay two corpses of deferring age. The first was identified as that of Mr Johnson, his eyes widened in terror and his arms and legs caught in mid-flail for help. The other was a different story entirely, and only confirmed links to another case. In the 1960s, an unruly punk type had moved into Rosethorn Place with the virtual intent of establishing a bad name in the dormant community. Mr Johnson's dying mother, whom he cared for alone at number 24, became a target of aggravation. Night after night, the boy would appear on the street and begin shouting insults up at the old woman. The poor lady was hysterical. A young Mr Johnson, of course, was naturally furious. He was immensely close to his mother, and the police were too inefficient in dealing with the crime. The man gave up on justice, and decided to exact retribution himself. One night, he heard the young punk's voice from the road. Mr Johnson was quick to react to the situation. He got out of bed, 
seized up his rifle, went to the downstairs window, and fired. The boy was instantly killed by a bullet to the head. Mr. Johnson was shocked, having only intended to scare the youth away. Unwilling to get in prison for what he had done, however, he did instead decide to cover up the killing. He dragged the corpse inside, covering all physical signs of the death, placing it in a personal wine cellar downstairs, and, over the next few days, got to work in retiling the basement. He never told a soul about the wrongdoing. In fact, the entirety of the crime was only discovered with the clean's horrifying finding nearly half a century later. But how had elderly Mr. Johnson's body ended up in the cellar? Since the eventual closure of investigations, 24 Rosethorn Place has never found a new owner. The story is known, and it has put many potential buyers off. Hence, rumours are now afloat that the house will be repossessed, withdrawn from legal sale, even demolished. One detail still abodes, however. It is rumoured that every night, on the suspected anniversary of Mr Johnson's disappearance, the sounds of a malicious cry can be heard, alongside the screaming, calling of a struggling old man. A cry for help, liberation from fate.